Hi, everybody. Hey, I'm Ed. <laughs> and I'm Barb. And we're Boy the Streeters. Streeters. I hope you just enjoyed the video prior to our Q&A. We are working on the Oak Tree Project and uh, outlining that bird is, is fun. And we are also going to be, we're also going to be, you know, doing the whole bird. So we want you to keep up with it and uh, want to welcome everybody to the channel tonight. I hope you've had a great weekend. It's been hotter than Hades here in South Carolina. And That's right. It sure has. So, hey, we uh, last, during the week, we had a couple of questions, and we're going to go ahead and get to those while you're thinking of other questions to ask us. The first question was, how do you cut small pieces of glass? Well, what I found over the years is uh, cutting small pieces of glass is actually quite easy if you have two sets of grosing pliers. So what I found, I'm going to show you, is I've, I've taken, and you can probably see this right here, this is just a little strip of red glass that's three-eighths of an inch wide, and I'm going to score it right down the middle, and then I'll show you how to break it. Oh, did you hear that sound? That's a beautiful sound of cutting glass start to finish. So I'm going to grab with my running pliers right here. You can see the red glass right against my blue shirt. So I know you can see the glass. So one end of my running pliers on one side of the score, my other running pliers, I mean my other grousing pliers on the other side of the score and straight down, right down the middle. You can't do that by holding it with, in one hand and using your grousing pliers. You just can't do it. The glass is too narrow to use your running pliers. So spend the $12.95, get another pair of grousing pliers. You won't have any more problems. So when you get to doing small pieces of glass, when you're grinding them, they make little thumb guards and we'll put them up on our website for you next, for by the end of the week. And you can use those for grinding the glass so that you don't grind the skin away because you really, you won't feel the skin grinding away from the diamond. But when you take it away, all those little corpuscles will produce little drops, droplets of blood once you reach the first layer of skin coming off. So That's why I keep a little bit of fingernail. Yeah, and I'm not a warning before it starts taking the skin. Yeah, just a little warning because you know you can you can you know if you need to you can do your nails on your grinder head. However, just wanted to show you two pair of grosing pliers, guys and gals, is just something very simple to add to your toolbox in your glass studio so that when you are cutting small pieces, you have the tools to do it with. Now, of course, when you're cutting small pieces of glass, your foil may encompass the whole piece of glass. So then what do you do? You get your X-Acto knife out and you cut the foil back, leave enough to solder on there, trim it up, make it look good so that the light will come through and show the work that you took the time to make that little small piece of glass for your customer or just for because you can do it. I hope that Wherefore. answers your question. Wherefore? Wherefore? <laughs> Wherefore? If you're going to take the time to cut a small piece of glass, you sure don't want to cover it up with foil. So foil it, cut it back with your X-Acto knife and get that light behind it. So we had one more question and then we're going to get right to your questions. And thanks again for tuning in tonight, guys. What do you use to polish or clean the glass with? I assume this question is coming from someone who does copper foil. And if that is, we use a non-abrasive car wax, basically, and I'm not promoting it, but the simplest one, the one that I've known since I was as big as this piece of glass is turtle wax. So get a non-abrasive wax, turtle wax, just a liquid wax, put it on there. You know, the main thing is that you get your copper foil and your solder. You get your solder clean before you polish it or put the wax on. Because if you don't, it's going to oxidize under the wax. Right, Barb? That's right. 
So, yeah. hey, I hope that helps. Just turtle wax, little green jar, $4.95, you know, basically anywhere. Any auto parts store carries it, and I hope that helps. Yeah. Um, just want to say hello to everyone. we got people here from Indiana, from Florida. Uh, let's see. North Carolina. I'm, I was looking at them. Uh, Texas. Um, oh, hey, Lee. Magali's here. Magali's here from... Port St. Lucie, no. Uh, West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. And Joyce is here. Renee is here from Florida. And Jean. Hey, Jean and Brenda. Yeah. yeah thank you guys for tuning in and Hi, coming everybody. back every week because uh, we think it's really a good way to share information and chat. Maryland. Oh, Jupiter. Magali's from Jupiter, Jupiter Beach. Florida. Jupiter Beach. Okay. That's near Port St. Lucie, I think. No, Jupiter's no, north no, of no, or no, south no. of uh, St. Right. Augustine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, south of St. Augustine. Am I right, my Magali? Cousin, I'm not sure. Maybe. My cousin's moving to St. Augustine. Soon. Yeah. Canada. Wow. Welcome, Canada. Oh, Welcome. British Columbia. That. Oh, I hope the fires aren't too bad out there for you. We've been catching smoke here on the East Coast from your fires. And uh, I hope they get them under control soon. What a terrible, terrible thing to have going on in such beautiful oh, wilderness in British Columbia. Yeah. So much. Okay, guys, you got any questions for us? Just let us know. Yeah. Um, so we're you like that. Hope you like that video. I don't know. Do if any, do any of y'all paint on glass already? Uh, if, if not, it's a great way to, it's very inexpensive to get started. You know, the most, ex the most expensive tool you have to buy when you're painting are your brushes. Now I have two different badger hair brushes, you know, badger hair back in the day was used for uh, your shaving cream and you used to lather up with the badger hair. Well, I have two badger hair brushes. My one badger hair brush is three inches wide and it costs over a hundred dollars. And I'm guessing because whoever had to go in there and get that hair off the badger, he wanted to get paid pretty well. <laughs> so. Anyway, <laughs> badger hair brushes are pretty expensive. And, you know, a badger is a pretty bad animal. So they cost a little bit of money because I guess you have to hold them down Sorry. to get the hair off of Sorry. them. It's really difficult. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but the small badger hair brushes uh, is good. Are and they from small badgers? They must be from mini badgers. But anyway, as we move through this painting process with the Oak Tree Project, these birds are going to come to life. And we're going to show you everything that we know about painting on glass and making this project work. So we did finish another window last week for the Oak Tree Project. We've started another window today. And we're happy to say that we're, we'll be down to five windows by the end of the week this week. And it's rocking. Yeah, we'll continue with the painting uh, videos until we complete that whole project. So <clears throat> that whole painting project will keep with those videos every week. So uh, you'll see that process all the way through. So that should be fun. Um, have you ever made a lamp form by turning your lampshade upside down and filling it with spray foam? That's a fantastic idea. That's a, that's what do you do then? You fill it with spray foam and then you trim, trim it. Or you just, yeah, you would. Expandable have, foam. Expandable so. foam. That yeah. is a fantastic That's a great idea. idea. Up until about, about eight years ago, Barbara and I had wooden lamp forms. And Who gave those to us? Do you uh, I don't remember. But when, when we, during one of the hurricanes, we had a lot of rain and our, and our facility was flooded. And we lost the lamp forms along with a lot of other things. They were so, real old wooden lamp. They were wooden like, lamp I can't even forms. Remember where we got? They had the patterns with them and everything. And the the thing about it is, they weren't just one panel. They were three hundred and sixty degree wooden forms. And, they, and you could tell they'd been used for years and years. Uh, and I don't years. remember who gave them to us, but you know they would be a small fortune for someone to to build and fabricate today. So your expandable foam idea is really, really cool. That's great. That's um, the Patsy. Thank you for that. Interesting. So Very interesting. I think that can help a lot of people that are, you know, lamp forms are terribly expensive and they're 
not really what some people want. You know, we want to try to be more creative these days. So, hey, Brenda, awesome. um, I don't know that we've ever told anybody how Barbara and I got started. Um, but if you're starting your own stained glass business, we are going to have some tutorials or if you're wanting to start your own business, we are going to have some tutorials coming up that will outline um, things that are very, uh, that are must haves when you start your own business. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that you have to remember and there's a lot more things that you'll forget. But as you move through the process of opening your own facility, there are a lot of things to take into consideration. And your biggest one starting your business out, Brenda, is going to be your overhead. Am I right, Barb? Yeah. I, you know, starting your own business, I, my personal, uh, what I believe is when you're starting your own business, um, don't just quit your day job and just start your own business. You know, you can want to go gradually into it, but um, I've got a whole outline and I'm working on some classes on that. But um, if you want to get into the business of glass, uh, we can, we can do like a, a short uh, live yeah. section each time and maybe answer like one stained glass business question. And then we have I know that the biggest question is how to price your work. Right. And so I would say the first thing you need to do is figure out how much money you want to make. Do you want to be a hobbyist? Um, do you want to just work because you love stained glass and you like giving it as gifts? And you want to make people happy? And you want to make people happy? There's nothing wrong with that. That's cool. No, not at all. Or, or do you want to do it to make money? Um, and so that would be, you know, two different angles that you would go at because, you know, do you, if you're in business, you're going to need to make a profit. So you have to figure that out. So we got a lot of other questions here, but I'd yeah. love to talk to y'all about how to yeah, start. So, and, I, and I think we could do that where, where we had it, where you could not only we could tell you about it, but then you could go to our website and download that information. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a workbook that says, OK, there's three ways to price your work. And this is, you know, how this you is do the it. formula. This yeah. is the formula. This is how you do it. But first thing you want to do, do is find out how much you need to make every year to survive and to pay your bills and to live comfortably. That's where you want to start. And then you work backwards from there to figure out how many pieces you want to, how many pieces of stained glass you can make a year. I know it sounds kind of involved, but it's not that hard. But anyway, it's really not. It's just, it's a formula. It's a mathematical formula of what you really want to achieve by being in business for yourself. Barbara and I have, uh, have been in business. This is our 36th year. We don't pretend to know everything because we don't. However, we have had lots of ups and downs and we've rewritten our business plan. Well, because of the COVID, that would be four times. And so we've changed it a little bit and we've changed a few things now and, and how we're going to be moving forward in our business. Um, you know, as, uh, as we get older and, what we need to do and how much money we need to make and the services that we still would love to offer our customers. Right, Barb? Yes. So what did Magali, she has mm -hmm. a question okay, or we have questions coming up. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to just talk nonsense. Well, you know, yeah, he rambles on. So, <laughs> okay, let's get to our, our questions. I'm going to try to go to the first ones first. Um, Okay, Joyce, you need to talk to Patsy about how would you keep the foam from sticking? I'm not sure how. Uh, saran wrap, probably. Oh, saran wrap. That's yeah. easy, right? Saran wrap, nice and I would imagine that's Patsy, but I believe saran wrap will keep it separated from the from the lampshade to the to the expandable foam. So. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> Dar Darren tried some of the glass line paint. I'm not even familiar with glass line paint. 
the only paint we use is the ruche paint because it is permanent none of the other glass paints are permanent they will fade over time you have to get you have to make that glass paint part of the glass it actually melts into the glass and becomes part of the surface you can take a key is, because it is glass paint and so it's part of the glass it becomes the well it's part powdered of enamel so it's part it's glass itself it's crushed glass okay finding stained glass besides hobby lobby between greensboro and conway greensboro greensboro uh, would be in the middle uh, kind of a little Greer. west of the center. Do you know where Greer, South Carolina is? If you know where Greer, South Carolina, I know it might be out of the way from Greensboro. Hmm. Yeah, because we go through Greensboro to go to up towards Roanoke and into Blacksburg. Oh. Okay, so she's pretty far up highway, actually up highway 38 coming out of, uh, coming out of North Carolina runs into Dillon, South Carolina. And so, um, Areas up in, the, in that way, you're 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 pretty you're pretty far. I think you're north and east of Charlotte. So Charlotte's going to be your biggest city, or um, even um, maybe even Raleigh may get you may get you there. We have a great glass supplier in Greer, South Carolina. Uh, it's the Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass Company. You can look them up. Uh, and oh, here it's Carolina stained glass in Durham. There you go, Raleigh Durham area. That's what I thought. And around you, that tri, you know, that triangle area. Okay, Carla wants to stop in. Yes, just uh, look us up, but please uh, contact us early because our hours are totally different than they used to be. We work Tuesday. Well, actually, we work. We work seven days we a week for seven three days weeks. A week for 25 days, three weeks. Yeah. And then we take five days off. So our schedule is nothing like it used to be. And the gallery isn't open. It's all private now because we're so busy. And then we've set up the studio. So we're doing this. And we would be happy to show you our studio yeah. workspace. I mean, you guys, any of you guys that we talk to, yeah, sure. come on out. Go, yeah. Come see us. Anybody wants Just to let us know. You know. Yeah. Because you know, our studio isn't, isn't like the ultimate studio, but it's set up perfectly for what we do for a living. And uh, there's nothing like being able to share it with our good friends here on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, Carly wants to know if there's anything near Myrtle Beach uh, for glass. Calabash. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name. And then there's somebody in North Myrtle Beach that sells supplies and glass. Yeah. J&M stained glass in North Myrtle Beach. Oh, I remember J &M. that. J&M. And I'm not sure Calabash. And I'm not sure about Calabash, North Carolina. And we do have a little bit of glass. We don't have it like we used to, <laughs> but we, most of the glass that we have in our studio is all is for jobs. Um, but you know, if you drop by and you see something you like in our rack, you're welcome to purchase it. As long as we're not using it for a job, we're, uh, we're good with that. Okay. So we've had a couple questions about uh, the business of stained glass, how to price your work and that kind of thing. So how about if, uh, let's see how we price our work. How about if we answer that question on the next live stream, I'll do a little. Um, a formula, I guess. Well, it, it all goes back to how much, Yeah. how much money, it, you know, if, if you're going to quit your day job, which we recommend both of us highly do not do that. Not well, until you're making it. When we started this stained glass, our, our glass company in 1986, Barbara was working in advertising in in uh, television in the television industry and the radio industry. She was a sales manager. I was working in, in a commercial glass setting. So I was working on high rises set in big glass. And also we opened the company. So we had, Actually, my dad worked with it. He was retired. And, and Ed's he, dad worked for free. He worked for free and kept the doors open while Barbara and I both had our real jobs. And it, it took us about three years before Barb said to me, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to just step off the curb. And it is when you step off that curb, 
it's very challenging. But I was the one that had to say, go ahead and you leave your job. I'll keep my job. I'll support you. Get that business going because it came to a point where he was working two jobs and he just, I was never home up. with her. I was he, always working. He couldn't keep up. So at that point, when you just, when you're making that money and you can't keep up, that's the time to say, okay, now, now I know I can make it. Another thing is, if your numbers don't sound right, I always, usually aren't. <laughs> if, if you if you can't figure it out, get out of debt, you know, lose the, your own personal debt. That will make your life so much easier when you're trying to work on, you know, build a business that you really love. If you can keep your personal debt down, you don't have to make as much money to begin with. And that really right. means a lot when times get tough as well. I'm yeah. not saying throw away no. your credit cards. Keep your credit cards. Keep your credit cards. Your credit, but keep your debt low. Right. Uh, that's just my personal. And opinion. you know what? We were we were very fortunate because that that rule applies to us all the time. So when the COVID hit and the country shut down, we didn't have any debt. We had our mortgage for our home, and we had the company rent. And we were very fortunate. We were very fortunate. We had the, you know, we had the building that we had to pay for every month, and um, and that's good. But you know, over the years, we we've, we've taught ourselves to be very thrifty. You know, if you think about it, telephones, internet, all those things, fifty nine dollars a month here, thirty nine dollars a month there, twenty eight dollars a month there. Guess what? By the end of the month, it all adds up to, am I working? hard enough or am I making enough money to do this for the rest of my life? Think about it. Okay. Now I, I saw some comments about some, some glass paint on here. Uh, I'm not familiar with that glass paint. Unless you heat that glass paint, unless you heat that paint and unless it's made of glass, if that paint is like an enamel or just a regular paint, it's not going to, it's going to fade over time. Yeah, they have. You have to use a glass paint. And what temperatures are we working at? I'll, the Roche paints, the the blacks, the tracing colors go up at about twelve hundred and twenty two degrees. And when they reach that temperature, the surface of the glass is now soft. The surface of the glass is soft. The Roche enamel paints have melted and attach themselves and become part of the surface of the glass. Any other paints that you use, uh, you know, I can't say, oh yeah, that's great well, because we don't use the oven, them. Heating it in the oven will not make it permanent. No, 400 degrees, all that's going to do is burn you. It's well, not going it, to do anything with the glass. Well, it's going to put the paint on the, it's going to put the paint on the glass, right. but not permanent. And, and I definitely wouldn't give it to a customer. When they're expecting now, painted have, stuff. We, not when, yeah. We have, and it may fade from ultraviolet, from the sun too. So I don't know what, you know, I know the rouge paints don't fade. Yep. Absolutely do not. And they last. <laughs> hundreds of years. Well, I don't know about that. How about, you know, they old. haven't been in business for hundreds of years, but the amount of time they've been in business. If you look at all of the people that paint on glass and they do it for a living, not a hobby they all use Roche paints Yep. and they all fire them in a, in and a kiln I mean, and firing them in a, in your oven. Isn't, you know, that's cool. Nothing wrong with, nothing that. wrong with it. I'm not, we're not, we're not discrediting you, but what we want you to be aware of is that it's going to fade and it will come off because 450 degrees, you know, that's a good temperature to okay, cook a pizza. Glass line paints are 1300 degrees. So, and they're made of glass. Is it, is it glass? It is glass based. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll check that out. Thank you for sharing that because yeah. I was not familiar with that paint. And what you'll want to know though, if those paints are that high, 1300 degrees, glass slumps at 1250. So I don't know how that's going to be work. real careful with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, that's the thing you have to, you have to understand the temperatures of glass and what it does and when it does it. Okay. At a thousand degrees, you can do anything you want with the glass. Once it reaches below a thousand degrees, it better be in the annealer or it better be, you know, you better be done with it. 
at 1,250 degrees, glass slumps. At 1,225 or 26 degrees, it starts getting soft on the surface. And that's the temperature that the Roche paints work at. At 1,300 degrees with those glass line paints, again, I'd have to just do some testing. But usually, usually about 1,275 degrees, the edges of your glass will roll. Yes, I'm not sure how that works. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to buy some and test it out. We may buy just a, a little. We may do a this or that. Yeah. yeah we we'll, might. we'll buy one color because I have, I have 28 colors of the Roche paints. And I really enjoy the paints and I'm very familiar with how they work. Like the colors of the Roche paints, you only have to fire them to 920 degrees. Okay. For your colors, but your blacks, your tracing, your mats, they all have to go to about 1220 degrees. You're all you're, you're making that surface slick. It's wet. The glass, the powders have melted and they become part of the surface. But thank you for sharing that. That's yeah, the glass line. I mean, it. we don't like, again, we don't pretend to know everything. Thanks for the, for the tip. And we will, next get time I out. order some paint, which I'm going to let's tomorrow, I'll order a glass line. Let's I'll see. just get a, we'll get their tracing black and see what happens. Okay. Uh, I had a question. Do you guys ever have trouble getting foil to stick? I think we have that question every week because it's, it's a common question and a common problem. <laughs> right. So for your, for your toolbox in your studio, you need rubbing alcohol. Oh, that's another question. And uh, sometimes what's happening um, is if, you know, uh, some of you may not use a grinder or may not have one in your studio and maybe you're using that stone. The main thing to remember is when you're copper foiling, if your thing, the oil from your skin gets on the glass before you put the tape on it, the, the copper foil tape will not stick over the oils that your skin produces. Uh, it just won't do it. It just won't do it. So you may have trouble doing that, and it could be the way you're holding the glass, the way you're turning it. But a lot of times, most of the time, it's because it's not cleaned correctly or ground properly. You know, when you grind the glass, it brings the sand up to the surface. So keep that in mind. And, you know, nowadays grinders are so inexpensive and you can you can really find them at yard sales uh, sometimes. And uh, just just do make sure that your glass is cleaned thoroughly. And keep the oil from your fingers off. Once you grind the glass and clean it. Only touch the centers of the glass. Don't touch the edges. That's my my tip for yeah, foil not it. sticking. Just hold yeah. it, and or get you your hand foiler. <laughs> yeah. Um, Magali had a question. Uh, she likes her solder lines to show as thin as possible, so she tries to use use three uh foil uh -huh. as much as she can. However, she doesn't know whether she's using the wrong foil because she's afraid she might be compromising her project. Magali, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you can use different size foils within your projects as Barbara and I use different profiles of lead in our lead projects. So you're not compromising <clears throat> You're not compromising the integrity of the window or your project, but because you want it to look very petite and fine, which is awesome. I, I applaud you <laughs> for wanting to make those lines that narrow and using the, the three sixteenths foil is only going to give you a 32nd of an inch on each side, because keep in mind, most of your glasses are an eighth of an inch thick. Not many are three thirty seconds. Most of them are four thirty seconds, which is one eighth of an inch. And then if you're using three sixteenths, that gives you a thirty second of an inch. Yeah. So when you put those two pieces together, your solder line, Magali, is only a sixteenth of an inch. So it's like, it's really awesome. And believe it or not, the more 
Um, the better your solder joints are, the easier it is to sell your work. And copper foil, y'all, you're either good at it or really good at it. And uh, a lot of the only the only thing I would say is not to use three sixteenths lead if you're building a lamp because there's too much gravity at, and heat it at work. But as far as using three sixteenths lead, That's good awesome. for you. Yeah, go ahead. They even make if a. I mean, I mean, three sixteenths foil. I'm sorry. Yeah, three sixteenths. You know, they even make five thirty seconds foil. Which is a, yeah, it depends another, on the glass because some glass you you yeah. won't even be able to use it. So Magali, so take that into the consideration because the texture of glass you can't you can use, forget about. Forget the about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. But a nice you know spectrum um, glass with little texture and and you know well sorry and very even. No longer around are they? No, that's ocean what side ocean now. Side? Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about that glass either. So anyway, know. but the five thirty second, you know, let's just say you know most. Most mouth blown antique glass or what are called G and A's German new antiques are uh, about only a 16th of an inch. That would be beautiful to work with that three sixteen. With the three Ooh, and even the, would the look nice too. Yeah. The hand blown G and A, you can even go down as far as five thirty second foil because the glass is so thin to create that petite look that you're looking for. Fragile. Fragility. Fragility. <laughs> Okay. Um, there was one thing that Carla said she keeps her alcohol in a spray bottle in her studio. Great idea. I like it. Love that. I like it. Um, Magali, I don't. Okay. I think she's with us now. I, I didn't know what that question was. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, do you use a computer program for designing patterns? No, we don't. Uh, I use computer programs for doing presentations and that kind of thing. But um, she's he, got me. I, he's, <laughs> he's the the one that draws all of the patterns. Um, so we just leave it to him. And it, to learn the with everything else that we're trying to learn right now, computers. Yeah, computer for me design. to do digital drawings and stuff, you know, I, I'm afraid that um, we would lose the personal touch and, uh, and I, I really love drawing and over the 36 years I've taught myself how to draw just about anything. So, yeah, but there's nothing wrong with using a computer design program all. and people on here probably can help you. If you're looking for one, ask some of these people right here, they'll probably hit a lot of them do use, um, computerized design. Right. And what you'll find though, is when you're printing your designs out, everything changes a little bit. So it's always nice to do your, print your design out on one little, on one piece of paper. Don't try to print 40 pieces of paper and print a design out. It's not going to work. What I would suggest to do is to, you know, print your design out so that you can look at it and then draw it by hand to scale. You know, if you got a two inch, if you got a border around there or three borders, you know, the outside border is going to be two inches. The middle border is going to be a half inch and the interior border might be another inch and three quarters. So those are all, and then, then go, the best thing to do is start out center line, center line, center line, left to right, center line, top to bottom. And a lot of times you can fold your pattern in half and just reproduce it as you go. Okay. I had the, uh, I had a question. I, I want to get these questions. I don't want to Please do. We're trying. We're rambling, but, and we're not in any hurry. Hey, we're uh, here. The, there was a question that I'm looking through here about, oh, uh, can the paints be used on objects that have already been slumped? And no. The black. Oh no, because the, the, the they temperature, go up too quick. Yeah, they go up. See, like the, the Roche paints, when in the video that you prior to the QA, I said, we're gonna fire these paintings in 42 minutes. So my my kiln goes from zero 
all the way up to 1220 degrees, give or take, and soaks for three minutes in a total of 42 minutes. I'm taking the glass rapid fire. Okay. So uh, when you when you've slumped something, you've already uh, worked with the molecules and, and annealed it, I hope. And to add something to it, I would say no, because the paints are now. Uh, yeah. But could you apply the paint? And then take it up slow to the temperature that you want to fire it to. And then soak it for the three minutes and then take it down real slow. It just three so minutes. So what you can do is slow. paint your flat piece of glass. Fuse. Slump. Fuse it slump. before you slump it. What's slump? Put the paint on it first. Paint it. Fire it. Get the paints to stick. And then slump your glass. What's the slumping temperature? Usually about... 1250. It'll be fine. Once the paints have, are fired, they're not coming off. But th that won't no. make them. No, because we yes. have so we have yes. six more the firings yes. on the birds. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer yes, is yes. You can, but you, you got to figure it out. First. The, yeah, paint it first. Before. And then slump it. And okay. what a nice way to do it. I mean, you can add so much detail. Yeah, a lot more than you yeah, once putting the, little tiny pieces of glass. You just paint those little details. On. Yeah, and you know, that's that's, that would be really nice. And, uh, but you'll find that, you know, the paints aren't going to run. So if you, you put the paints on your glass, fuse and, you know, do the temperature that you need to do while the piece is flat, allow it to cool anneal, and then put it on your mold and allow it to slump. Yep. You can. So the answer is yes. Uh, Brenda, uh, no, that was Brent. Brenda said, answered the question, but someone said, Nancy, do you trust window suction cups to hang your sun catchers? No. <laughs> That's a big fat no. Not unless you want to make more. Uh, yeah, unless you <laughs> want to make more. I don't. I, I don't I don't trust the suction cups. Um, you know, heat expansion and contraction will pull them off the glass. Yeah. And they'll start dropping the weather gets cold and you come in the next day and your sun Everything's catchers right on there. the floor. Uh, we usually tell people tack a little nail in the, in the wood at the top. Or Use whatever. a cup hook, you know, for a cup hook or something like that. Don't trust the And windows. fishing line ribbon or a very petite, good looking chain. Because glass contracts and expands just like. Yeah. You if you're, you got a suction cup on a window, guess what? When it's hot outside, that glass expands. When it's cool outside, that glass contract contracts. So, you know, that's, that's another one of those beautiful things we have to deal with in life is expansion and contraction. And you, you always want to keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. C. Wood said procreate is easy to use. I'll check that out because, you know, there's a lot of detail pieces that would make it easier for him if I could add, give him stuff that he could add into his window. You know, I'm not really a fan of just copying, you know, patterns out of, no. books and stuff so uh -uh. any way that we it helps us create our own work is very welcomed yeah yes yeah i, I change it i mean if a customer brings me in something out of a book there's a way to change it but make it look the same way that they want it yeah because uh to use someone else's pattern and produce some something that someone else yes. has done that's not me the science behind glass making of any kind is amazing. So much to learn. Very true, Magali. Magali, true. glass yeah. is a fascinating material. Yes. It has ups and downs. It'll make you cry. It'll make you laugh. But it does two things really It'll well. It'll make you money. It'll make you money. <laughs> but glass does two things really well, y'all. Can you guess what they are? What? It'll break and it'll cut you. Those are the two things that it does really well. We want to know only the good stuff, not oh, the bad stuff. You. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. Glass, I, th I think that's why I stayed in it. I started in this industry when I was uh, 17 years old. And it was just a summer job for me. Yeah. But I fell in love. I fell in love with 
with the process, with the material, um, maybe with the danger of it. I don't know. But uh, glass is just a, it's a fascinating material of all natural elements. That's the, everything that glass is made of, some of it's, you know, some of it's just right there in your backyard. Every time you start a, a fire and you're burning wood, the ashes. <laughs> what? In a, in a, in a, in a indirect way, potash goes into your glass, you know, so. Um, what are the ingredients in glass? You don't want to be bored with all 13 <laughs> of those. <laughs> I did that one time. On, on a television, television show. show. <laughs> and they had to fade them out. They had to fade so it out because I, start, I started lining them up, baby. Lining them up. Okay. So, but uh, so we have a, uh, we have a, uh, if you've never seen glass made, we have a float glass plant in Lawrence, South Carolina. You can take a tour of the flat glass plant and they, they do float glass. And which is your plate glass, window glass, quarter inch glass, three eighths glass. Uh, they do all clears. And, Brenda said she loves glass because people get so excited about something you make. They do. People love glass. So many people love glass. And when you have something new, they just, it's nice to see people get excited about yeah. your work. It's very gratifying. Yeah. When you, when you finish something for your customer or even a friend, and you give it to them, that smile is indescribable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, you really did good when you get a tear or two. And I love that. Carla said she loves doing glass, but uh, sometimes she stays up too late. And I, it affects her day job. <laughs> I'm afraid I, I stay up. You know, I told Barbara this weekend that I, I felt a little guilty because I wasn't working, but you know what? It didn't take but a second for that to go away. I was fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he really felt guilty. I really felt guilty. But once I started fishing, I, I didn't feel a thing. Uh, Karen's here. Hey, Karen. Hey. Yeah, so we've been, um, you can see on the live chat, we've been talking about a lot of things. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Some people have come, come and gone and we got some new people here. Glass hit by light dances the colors around. Real eye candy. Love the light castings. Absolutely. Absolutely, Serge. Um, yeah. That's the beauty of it. That is the the, ref, the refraction of this material combined with the sun produces some colors that you've never even seen before. So. Okay, and uh, so we'll be working. We're that's something we're working on now with our blown glass that's going in the South Carolina Aquarium. We're working with reflection of color and light and water and magnification because and when magnification. you put it under water so that, that it's going to be a very interesting project yeah and the cool thing is we're doing a project you know we do a lot of beachy projects installations and things this is black water swamp so it will be well it's a display are, within their yeah. black water swamp uh so we're Exhibit. using, yeah. So we're using ambers and uh, greens it, and those are we. Blues. Barbara and I live on a black water swamp, and they call it black water. But it, the color of the water is a, a reddish ice tea, a dark ice tea color. So the colors for the aquarium are I, what I call shades of tea. Yeah, kind of weak, like tea. strong, and everything in between. Okay, Karen wants to know where we get supplies mainly from. First, we go to, um, well, I suggest all of you go to your local uh, retail. Please supplier, do. Support your, your, local support your local stained retail glass yeah. supplier. I'm not talking about Hobby Lobby or any place like that. Because I think their, their glass is really high. High, and I don't know. I think they're high. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway, your stained glass retailer should be your first stop. 
And if they can't help you go to Amazon and you can go to our page and the products that we use that are, we buy from Amazon are on the RDRV page at conwayglass.com backslash RDRV. So we list everything. I'll have the paints on there tomorrow. I'll have a, a mm. whole list of all the paints and everything. Um, yeah. So, but do support your local uh, stained glass supplier or the local stained glass shop first. Yeah. And glad the, the, the thing about uh, purchasing glass is that just freight just eats you up and you want to, you want to keep in mind that, that's part of the what you need to be charging. Okay, so someone asked, can we do a live stream on the different styles of glass? You mean the different manufacturers of glass? Or are you talking about the different styles uh, like traditional, Victorian, uh, contemporary? Yeah, you want to talk about stained glass windows or you want to talk about I, I think that's what she means. Traditional different styles different of glass. Different styles of windows. Okay. Yeah, or we might be able to do a video. What exactly are you looking for? Are you looking for uh, some information about design information? We could probably do a live stream to talk about design or a video. Different styles of glass. Okay, Magali, you bought a you bought an inland grinder for forty bucks. You go, girl. I hope different you ran textures. to your car. <laughs> okay, different textures. I got you. Okay, the, yeah. Um, hmm. We can do different textures. Just for instance, this texture right here. Yeah, we'd have to set up the light. Yeah, so we have to set the light up, right? This is called a figure C, and they make it in twelve different colors. Yes, yeah, so a Wismac called figure C, and I think you can probably still find it. I'm not a lot of the manufacturers right now cost. We, we saw it in a church not too long ago. Yeah, we were figure working C. on it. It was red, a red figure. It was a red C figure C, and we were like, oh, we've never seen that red figure C before. Yeah, and you'll find these in a lot of old church windows. They come in all different colors, but the red figure C is absolutely gorgeous. You know, and then you have your your iridescent glasses. This is a bullseye. Oh, you can see that. There you go, Barb. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. So when we get done painting the green hair, it's going to look like this. We're using paints, not glass. Right. And so and we don't have a whole lot of text. Oh. Well, this yeah, is just a, this is called, this is an old spectrum glass. I'm sure maybe Oceanside may make it now, but this is a iridescent. This is actually a Wismac glass, Wismac. Uh, from the Paul Wismack Corporation up in Payton City, West Virginia. This is called Cracked Ice. This is one of their textures. And this is one of those textures, like, for instance, Magali, you probably would want to switch to a 732nd foil on this because it's so bumpy and everything. So then you have um, okay. another texture. And if you see something that's round bubbles like this, just going to take a minute. I, I just have like five just sitting behind me, so I might as well take a minute and show you. This is a Wismac hammered. This is called the small hammer. This is a Wismac hammered. Has little tiny bubbles everywhere. And you always make sure you cut it on the smooth side, but if you want the texture up in your window, turn your pattern over and then cut the glass on the smooth side so that when you put it together, it's the pattern, the texture will be up or out, however you want to uh, call it. So I'm going to show you this. It's kind of funky. This is glue chip glass. I don't think you can see I'm not sure if you texture. can see. But this is, this is glue chip glass. And if you've ever seen the clear glue chip, this is a green. It looks like ice, chipped Look, ice. It looks like, yeah, frost on the windshield of your car. And um, so you probably, you know, you have to, it just depends on what you want. Now, the glue chip glass, you can make yourself if you choose to. Okay. That would be a good video. You can make the okay. glue chip glass yourself. Yeah. So if you have a local supplier and they only sell full sheets, 
That's okay too, because. What do you mean by full sheets though? Yeah. What do you mean by full sheets? And also if you're using, say, if you have a favorite type of glass, like you like a certain clear texture in all of your, you know, your pieces, then just buy one sheet. But as you get to know your supplier, I'm sure that at some point during the year, they're going to have a sale on cutoffs. Sure. They have to cut it sometime and they have to, it has to break sometime. So make friends with make friends supplier. with them. Yeah. You're like, Hey, yeah. What's up? Can I work for you on Saturday for a few hours for some glass? But yeah, I'd buy, I'd buy a sheet of your most common, you know, what you use clear or maybe you yeah. use white, whatever your projects are, pick one and make friends with your supplier. Yeah. So you're, you know, your full, a full sheet to us is 32 by 42, which is 9.33 square feet. That's a full sheet to us. And actually, technically, that's a half a sheet. Yeah. Full a sheet. full sheet is 32 by 84, if you can imagine that. But let me tell you, when you see sheets like that and you, you slide them out of the rag and you look at them with some light behind them, you just want to hug it. It's so beautiful. You want to take yeah. it home with you. Yeah. So... We got all the questions. I don't know. Would love to live stream on what you're doing right now. Best way to cut. Best way to cut names? No. Best way to cut. Best way to cut names? Except Letters, you mean? Letters? <laughs> okay. Ed Sibbett actually makes a book, a yeah. letter book. Yeah. Do I have it? Hold on. Let me look at my repertoire. Here. I'll, I'll post it. Oh, you might have it right there. Yeah. yeah. Letters are fun. Letters are fun. You, you always have to keep in mind. It's going to be backwards on one side. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it'll be backwards on one side. But these, this is a great way here. to Pick it up and show it. It shows you basically how letters should go and that you can carry them styles. on different styles. This is an Ed Sibbett book. It's called uh, an Ed. Ed's got some books that are just something else, but Ed Sibbett Jr. And uh, I, some of his, his books are still in publications. Yeah. I wonder what year this is, but you, you know, the other thing is, is if you have, if you have, and most of you, it looks like that are watching the channel. Um, Oh, Our 1986. Women. That's the year we went in business. <laughs> Probably one of the first books we ever bought. Probably. Probably. It doesn't look like it was used very much. No, it wasn't. Because uh, letters I found, if, if you just, like you're doing house numbers or letters for, for people in their transom above their front door or their last names, just... Try drawing it by hand. Actually, first thing you do is try writing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then sit back and look at it and then come back and double line it and then join your lines together so that they make a flow. Right. It's really hard. Putting somebody's name in a window is really tough. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've been doing this a long time and I still have trouble with it. And because I'm not happy until I get it just right. Yeah. I always like, yeah, there's so many ways to do it, but doing letters and, and numbers and things like that, you just have to just practice. have to have patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a wrong way to make letters and numbers? I don't know. Whatever works for you and looks good. I don't think there can be a right or a wrong way, um, but it has to be readable. That's the main thing. You have to be able to see it because that's why it's there to be able to read it uh out grew my craft room just for my glass any suggestions for a work area layout well yes i do have yeah oh, and our room. our my stay or our stained glass studio is 32 feet long and 12 feet wide and we have three we have two four by eight tables and a four by five light box all in that room. So there's a, there's quite a bit you, that you can do in that area, but um, 
you know, Barb's got some good ideas because I, the only reason Any I'm organized is because of her. Area, uh, first of all, well, how I would do it is I would draw out your room and then I'd measure all your tables and put them in it and then do a template and move them all around and see what works best. Mm -hmm. uh, put all your, you know, if you're going to have glass racks in there, you need to incorporate that. So make a list of everything in that's everything going in that room. Mm -hmm. And then what's it with the program they have at the, like they have where you can design your living room or something. You can, you can get the program for free and lay out your 13 or your 12 by 32 stained glass floor room room. And then your table sizes will be your furniture that you'll, insert into that room and you can pretty much design it pretty, pretty good. Right, Barb? Well, you need to think about what size projects you're going to be working on yeah. for your size of your tables. Yeah. We have a flip table. A we have a table that tilts. And a regular, a tilt table, a light box, a regular table. We've moved the glass racks out um, to give us more room to move. We don't store our glass in our glass um, work area anymore. Um, that's being moved out to the warehouse just to give us more room to move around. But if you're going to store glass, yeah, you got to plan for that as well. What size sheets you're going to buy. So I would put it all on paper first before I started buying stuff. Yeah. I would definitely be careful about that. Uh, Cause you don't want to be crowded. You want room to move. You want to be able to move. And you know, we have, we're very fortunate because we, we do a lot of large windows. So we're, the table that we have that tilts tilts down to about uh, probably 75 degrees. And that allows us to take the big windows. If you've ever tried to flip a big window up to turn it over, it's a little crazy. So we designed a tilt work table that we can allows us to, to let the front down, the back comes up. We can leave the window over, pick it up, move it, turn it around, set it back on the table, and then we'll pick the table back up. And then we can say it just makes it a lot easier because, you know, it's just Barbara and I. And, uh, you know, we have to we have to be able to still do our work. But that tilt table is awesome. It's like nuts and nuts and bolts and two by fours. Um. Brenda had a question about making spinners and someone on the live stream makes spinners. Uh, I'm not sure who it is, but they're here somewhere. And the key to that is putting wire around that outside edge and connecting all that together and then tinning that outside edge. So right. put that pre-tinned wire, tack it around there, solder around there, and you'll keep that spinner together if that's what you're worried about. But yeah, strengthen that mm. at the connection point. And I'm not sure what spinners are, but I heard about them and I'm pretty sure that's how you would make it strong. Yeah. You're definitely going to have to wire it. And uh, Barbara's got the, the pre tinned <laughs> copper wire on our website. If you wire everything together, gravity will, will not. And I repeat, not work against you. So your light box, there was a question about a light box will be as big as your, what you work with, what size sheets you work with, that I mean, you don't need that big of a light box because you're going to cut your glass right to a manageable right. size. Well, the first our the first light box that we did, I took a <laughs> I took a drawer out of a cheap dresser. Yeah, and I had a broken piece of glass that I got <laughs> out of the dumpster. Dressers. <laughs> yeah, and I got the broken piece of glass out of the dumpster at the shop where oh, I was okay. working, mm -hmm. and I came home, and my grandmother had given us a. Uh, new dining a room new set. dining room, a kitchen, kitchen set. kitchenette set. Yeah. Four chairs and a round table. And I built the very first stained glass window I ever built. And maybe next week I'll show it to you. Oh yeah. we should Because I still own it. It's, it's, everybody's tried to buy it, but it's 30, almost 40 years old right and now. It was in the flood. So it has a flood line. It has on a it. flood line. <laughs> so we That's left why, it. Yeah. It's on the frame. It's just on the frame. It's just yeah. on the frame. The water, we have a water mark on the water frame. Mark. But and yeah, yeah and so, I think it's got a mistake in it. I'm oh, it sure. does because okay. I pulled it. I pulled it, and when it's you see from the window a pattern out of the book, had a, out of a book that had a mistake in it, and we built it by the pattern, and then realized, and you oh, know that what? looks like <laughs> I didn't know any better. We didn't know any better. It's still pretty, anyway. 
I didn't know any better. But that hung on the back porch on the oh, river yeah. forever. Yeah. And it's now it's hanging in the guest bathroom here at the studio. Mm-hmm. It's we've been on for an hour, guys. Magali, you need a road trip to Wismock. And Yakagani for some glass. Oh, yeah. Would that be great? Yeah, that'd be awesome, right? Well, I'll tell you what. It, our, our friends at Palmetto Mirror and Art Glass up in Greer, they South have, Carolina, they, all that they got it. But Give them a call. Go see them. Yeah, on the way. You might want to stop there yeah. as well. They're just up in the and foothills of South us. Carolina. Come by and see us, too. Sometimes we have a little bit of glass that we can sell, but yeah. right now. It's well, right now, because with, with the Oak Tree Project, we're using Yakagani. We're using your burrows. We're using Wismac. We're using Kokomo. We're using it all in the yeah. in the Oak Tree Project. Yeah. We're giving them America's glass. Yeah, it's all American made. It's all American made glass. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> I think the downfall of Spectrum was other than the EPA shutting them down for their scrubbers, but the uh, the downfall of Spectrum was is they. What? I'm not spelling the Yakagani. If yeah. you're gonna have Yaka <laughs> what? I have no idea. You know, you know my dad would say. Oh, you and the rest of it, I think he got right. I, Pops would say, if you said Yakagani, he'd look at you and he'd say, you do and you're going to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> American made, the only way to buy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, you know, it's really hard to get tools uh, that are made in this country anymore. And, and it's. If you have your good tools, hang on to them because you're not going to find them again. Okay. It's like we had trouble finding those lead nippers and we were only able to, to come up with 10 pair. And uh, yeah, someone said they bought a, a whistling, a whistling, a whistling grinder. Magali. Oh, OK. Yeah, those are 40 good. bucks. Yeah, that's amazing. like I said, I, I hope you just ran to it. the car with it under your arm. <laughs> Don't give them time yeah, to change check their out mind. The yard sales for stained glass tools and you may find some glass. I had a lady come by and drop off some glass for us. A lot of the times are, you know, we've been in business for a long time and we've had a lot of students. Um, they're older now and um so they stop working with glass and their family will bring us their leftover glass and we donate it to the schools is what we do. So, uh, yeah. Selling glass sheets. There you go. Yeah. So they say, so yeah, keep an eye out for that because people just, you know, they can't really sell it. Yeah. It's not, it's not valuable to anyone, but, but you, someone like you. And it's heavy. So they don't want to pick it up and they don't want to throw it away. No, because they look at it and they're like, oh, my gosh, I can't throw this away, but I don't know what to do with it. So check it out. You know, sadly, a lot of our customers have uh, have moved on to the other side. And since we've been in business such a long time. But again, when they do, um, their spouses are our customers as well. So they'll call us and then we take and donate what they give us to the art teachers here within our county because the, the art in the school systems, and I don't know how it is in your area, but I would imagine it's that way all over the country because the higher ups think that ed, that art is not worthy of an education and, and they're wrong. So they cut the art budgets for the teachers. They still hire teachers to teach art, but they want to cut their budgets. So guess what? if we can get one teacher to teach one person about glass and let them really take it in. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, we give them, we give them what's donated to us. Yeah. You know, one time we had nine grinders. What in the world do we need with nine grinders? <laughs> yeah. Um, marketplace on Facebook or Craigslist. And I get questions about once a week about the best place to buy glass and uh, another one go yes yes facebook or craigslist definitely. yeah yeah and that's good because you can find it again they don't want to throw it away because it's too pretty you'll find some treasures here. right and there again too because of your knowledge about the glass and they're selling it you'll know that you're not getting taken advantage of cost wise you know because it's pretty doesn't mean it costs a lot it's all pretty. 
Till you break it. Till you, you break can all, it. You, you can always use it. Can we do a glass on types of glass with examples? Like this is a Wismac. This is a bullseye. I would suggest go to the Wismac website. Go to the bullseye website. Go to all the different manufacturer websites and it's just on the just on the camera like there's no way that we can show well, you, and you really that. won't get the the total effect of the glass on camera not that we wouldn't want to do it but like bullseye you know bullseye has bullseye has fusible glasses they have what they call their ringed ringed modeled glasses and they also do uh like like yakagani uroboros and bullseye all do Tiffany reproduction glasses as well. Another thing you might want to do, I mean, if you're really, really serious about building uh, stained glass windows and you have customers coming in to see you, you can't stock your whole store with uh, all the different samples of stained glass. So if you really like bullseye glass and you really like Wismat glass, buy a sample box. Spend the hundred and sixty dollars on the It'll bullseye last sample box. Lifetime, they'll update you. Your supplier That's, can yeah. send you updates of new glass, and you'll be probably uh, you'll learn some. Just having that glass sample box there will sell you so many jobs. The Kokomo sample box has over three hundred samples of glass not all of them are in production but most of them are the same way with the paul wismack corporation the paul wismack corporation is about probably another 300 pieces of glass but they have one row of just all of their textures and all of their textures are in clear but all of those textures come in all of those colors so you'll learn. Yeah. Oh you'll gosh. Learn glass. You'll soon it'll learn. Okay, yeah. this is this. I know this texture. Yeah. I know this texture. So it, it'll take a little bit of time, but yeah. that sample boxes will help you a lot. And a lot of times you can find them and they won't cost you anything. The other thing is though, Yard it's sales. well worth the investment to get the manufacturer sample box. Yep. We keep a Kokomo sample box and we keep a Wismac sample box. And we've had both of those sample boxes for over 30 years. And our uh, GNA. Yeah, we have a, that's right, we have a GNA sample box and it's awesome. Um, I forget how we got that. Uh, company out of New York, uh, oh, Benheim. Benheim, okay, if you're looking for some really nice, beautiful antique glasses, Benheim. Out of uh, B E I N H A M Benheim. Benheim, and they're a they they are a uh, a company that sells the what's called the German New Antique or G N A glass. It's not cheap. None of it's inexpensive. Just some cost more than others. So, I mean, we could we could show y'all you know, the sample boxes that we have, small, but I'd have to kind of practice with the lighting to show you, you know, like this is the texture. Yeah, and the main thing, the main thing is for your studio, okay, for your studio and personal knowledge, if you buy a piece of glass from someone and it's, Let's say you buy, let's say you buy a piece of bullseye. It's a it's just an eight by ten. But on there is B-1109-6. You want to keep that label and you want to keep that label on a small piece of that glass. <laughs> That's just another piece of glass that fell on the floor. And it didn't but, break. but if you have glasses that have the part number on it already, it's a glass thing. I'll be right back. I want to get something. Use, use that. Okay. So like several of our manufacturers that we buy from give us sample boxes. This is just a sample box of, this is shower door glass. This is called rain. So you can start your own samples. If you have the label on the piece of glass that you like, just cut you a small sample of it. Okay. So this is called. Is it the company we get the Lambert's flash? Yeah. Oh, 
the other name of the company? Benheim. Benheim. That's B E I N. Yep. B E I N H A M, I believe. So these are all textured glasses that we use and shower doors and stuff. But so you can make your own little sample box. But again, buying it is the is the way to go, and it's expensive. So you're not going to like buy all three of them at one time. I can no, promise you. Just that. buy the one you use the most. Buy the one you use the most. Spectrum used to have a really pretty sample box, um, and ocean. Oceanside now it went completely system 96. I don't know. Has anyone used the Oceanside? I, I haven't heard much about it. I guess it's uh, kneeled correctly. I, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I always thought spectrum glass was very simple. It was very annealed beautifully. You could just cut it. It was so. Oh, yeah. You I don't cut know it that Oceanside your eyes glass is as easy to cut as the original spectrum. But you'll find that the Wismac Corporation and Kokomo Will yeah. uh, they're annealed correctly too? You know, Paul Wismack Corporation has been in business over a hundred years. So, yeah. so when you're doing restorations, you know, your two go-to companies in the USA, Paul Wismack and Kokomo. Yeah. Why? So, because it's probably in the window you're trying to repair. So if you do church window restorations, you know this. You got those two sample boxes, or you're talking to your to supplier. Your supplier. Yeah, sure. And you can send, you know pieces to your supplier. Yeah. He'll help find it for you. And they'll help find it for you. Okay. There's a, is a, no, Wittermore Durgan is not. Wittermore Durgan. Are they still in business? Yes, they, they are. are. Wittermore Durgan. Wittermore Durgan. Take that, hey, take that to the bank. There, okay. If you haven't been there to Wittermore Durgan, please. Go check, check out, out, check I'm out their put site. The name right here. Yeah. Check out their site. They're, they've got a great sense of humor and they've got products that no one else has. Is that how you, is it like Whittemore School? Yeah, Whittemore School. Okay. Whittemore, Whittemore Durgan. Durgan. And they're up, they're up uh, in the northern tier of the country. And, um, but they're still in business. And they have things like lead rosettes. I don't know if any of y'all have ever used those before, but you can't find them. But they have cast lead rosettes. They have all kinds of things. And uh, yeah. it's, their website is not like flash. You know, it's not brand new. It's an old website. From back in the day. From back in the day. Just that their catalog was like a little paper catalog years ago. But love, love, love that company. Yeah. So check them out. Yeah. And, you know, always just keep in mind that uh, your freight is what's going to is what's going to knock you down. It's, it's always expensive. And uh, but. You you have a lot more fun if you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to match a color, he may have to order a large piece to match. Okay. Yeah. That sample box, Carla, that sample box will help you out. Yeah, it will. And your supplier should be able to tell you what your stained glass supplier. Yeah. Cause you know, he, even though he sent his supplier a sample, when it came back to him, it had a part number on it. Get that part number from him and just take a Sharpie and write it on the piece of glass that he gives you. Yeah, that's what we do. We keep you in your own little sample box. Keep your box. own little sample box. Because if you like, I have people call, I had a lady call today and bless her heart. She said, well, do you sell bullseye glass? And I said, well, what are you looking for? She said, well, I like the ring model white. Bullseye makes six of them. So I said, do you have a part number for me? Because they make six of she them. She had no idea what the part number was. She had no idea what the part okay. number was. Okay. Well, maybe she can find it on the website. Right. But that's what I told her. Please, I directed her to the Bullseye website because they're going to show that. And your, your white ringed models in the light, the ringed model is pink. They're very soft pink, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So um, she was looking for like a 12 by 17, which even if I didn't have it, I would have been happy to order it from her, but I need a part number. Any of y'all that need glass, 
if you have a part number for me, I will be happy to order it and ship it to you. Yeah, I can do that for you, but he needs a part number. Uh, spectrum sample set. Well, doubt it. Unless she finds. No, she has one. Oh my she gosh. She doesn't know what to do with it. Build a window with Build it. Build a window with it. Lots of two and a half. If you have, if you have a space. It's yeah. a great way to just build a. Actually, my, my father did take the whole spectrum sample kit and he made two transom glasses for the shop. So, and he engraved the number on the glass because, you know, when we puttied the window, of course, all the samples came off. So he engraved the number of the glass or the part number, reference number for that color onto the glass. It was awesome. So we had, tran no, it wasn't transoms. It was side light. Side we lights. Had, that's right. Uh, Wismax side light. And we had a spectrum side light. And we had those windows for years. Yeah, so we had them for fun. years. Yeah. He was just like, you know, I'm tired of looking through this box. I'm going <laughs> to put it in a frame. Carla, <laughs> Carla has a, yeah, Carla, he sounds like a hoot. <laughs> Some of his scraps are outside of milk crates you dig through. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You you to ever, be... Yeah, you guys, you need glass. Send us a sample or send us a number and we'll. we'll yeah, get a part number. Place. And if I can find it, if I can find it for you, I will be happy to ship it to you. Hmm. Yeah, engrave the number. That little vibrating engraver that you would engrave your tools with or anything else. You can write on the glass with it, you know, B1109-6. Mm -hmm. That's an expensive piece of glass, actually. <laughs> and we're using it, the 110906, we're using it in the oak tree project. Are we? Okay. Yeah. Gosh, right. y'all, thanks for tuning in tonight. Yeah, we are so excited. Tonight, right? Yeah. I think. We need to, our, our little dog is getting operated on tomorrow. Yeah. Dixie's she's, you know, she's 15. So we need to Let's, go home and check on her. Yeah. We have to check on her. She's, she's having a, uh, she's having to have a tooth removed tomorrow. She has an abscess tooth. So yeah. So we're going to go take care of her tonight and thank everybody for coming here tonight yeah. and joining us on the live stream. So if you joined us tonight and you haven't subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to hit the bell up in the corner so that you're reminded every time we have a new video coming out for you. you. Yes. Thank you guys. And, um, we all thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll let her know that everybody said that they hope they feel that she feels better. And Artie is doing great. Yeah, Artie's so doing everything's great. Everything's going, everything's well. And we just did 600 miles on Artie this weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, soon we'll have wet, uh, data there. So we'll be doing some live streams from the RV when we can get data in there. So I've been talking to this guy and telling him. Yeah, guess and, what? I decided this morning about seven o'clock when. We couldn't upload the video uh, where we were and that we were going to have to run down to our daughter's house to do it. And and we're to getting internet. <laughs> I had to go to a neighbor. I had to go to my daughter's house, but you know, we'll I had it. to take Gordon a cup of coffee and ask him to borrow his internet. <laughs> thank you, Gordon. If you're watching. Yeah. If you're you watching Gord, much. thank you. And Dolly. Appreciate thank you both. Jason. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Northern you guys. And Starling, that's the one to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Is that for the traveling, um, data that we can keep or purchase or is that uh yeah that would be okay nice. starlink okay yeah yeah because we've been watching and they said if you're going to do that get a, a separate data plan um Very welcome. you you don't want to get the same one that you like we have at&t on our phone we don't want to get another data plan from at&t because they'll they'll slow us down at the same they toggle us. toggle you is that By what you mistake. call it because you're on the same thing. So they, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just learning, but I have all, I'll, I will check out Starlink. Thank you, Amber. Yeah. Thanks. Amber. Okay. Let's let these fine folks get back to Hope things are good cutting. in South Dakota tonight. Yes. You know, good to see you guys. Yeah. It's good to see, good to hear from you. And, um, changing lanes. You're kidding. Hey guys. Hey, <laughs> 
That is amazing. It's so good. So good to see you. Thank you so much. You missed our live stream or you've been here, but uh, we watch you guys all the time. I'm ex I feel I feel honored Chad and Taryn, you guys from Changing Lanes are on our live stream. So check them out. Yeah, check out their their channel. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, we've been on for what, an hour and 20 minutes, and we're going to let these fine folks um, get back to their cutting. And happy cutting, everybody. <laughs> this we'll, is Ed and Barb. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Yes. Thanks again.